they are going to go down as far as accolades go and when they write history in the yearbooks it will go down as them being the greatest tag team of all time in the WWE i believe so in the new day and i, mean, I the think new day are, it, they absolutely are well, going to have their people that say in that time that they should be yeah. added into that equation too well they should be if you are the biggest act in that division in the biggest company in the world while they're grossing an insane amount of money you should be looked at as a hall of famer well i mean we're in the era of the whole being greater than the sum of its parts there are very few people that can move a needle there are very few metrics and that's what came up a lot during the hall of fame discussions that people would have where it's how do we judge some of these metrics now it used to be easy to see who moved house so ticket sales and again yes roman has been able to do that that's one feather that's in his cap but you know to me there are a lot of other things i think now at play where uh, how you promote yourself how you utilize social media how you build your up your own brand i mean i think a lot of that stuff also plays a part that's one of the biggest things that the young bucks have on their side is look what they were able to do from a merchandising point of view one of the things people hold against and they didn't go to wwe they never had to be put in a place where they had to go to wwe and they would have look let's be honest until WWE came sniffing around for them and Omega and those guys when they were leaving New Japan and they were trying to get them. How do you think that they would have been treated in the in the world of WWE? Look at tag teams, you know, much more re revered by WWE standards than what the Young Bucks would be and how they were treated a lot of the time. So they made the right decision, and in my opinion, and what they were able to do and how they were able to parlay it. You know, again, that's something that should absolutely be a feather in their cap. And there, there needs to be a balance, too, with guys like a Roman or people who excel in the WWE system. Yes, it's the big machine, but how do you operate inside that machine? Cody Rhodes in the next couple of years, if he makes it onto the ballot. And we're going to see this, I think, with next year's ballot. There's going to be a lot of people from this era now on the ballot, and we saw none of them get in. And it's going to be interesting to see. Because Becky Lynch, you can make a great case for Becky Lynch to be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, a great case. And people have made that case. Like, and if Roman Reigns doesn't make it in, who makes it in? Like, at that point, if if he doesn't make it in, can anybody possibly make it in if he doesn't? So it, there's going to be a whole lot of discussion. And it's just interesting moving forward. Like, objectively, how could you put anybody in if Roman Reigns isn't in there? Right? Right. Mm -hmm. There's, so, there's you know, a big daddy fan in the UK may, right now saying that same thing. Maybe you would put in, uh, <laughs> maybe you would put in NXT's future superstar, the the Mercedes maker, <laughs> Okada. Well, hey, speaking of Mercedes, we do have to get to this uh, before you run out of time here. We're rapidly doing that. Who will the mystery signee be? We know it's not you. Will it be Mercedes? Will me. it be Will Ospreay? Who, will it be Goldberg? Who is going to be Tony Khan's big signing on Saturday at the Full Gear Show? My initial thought was Mercedes Monet. However, it seems the general consensus now has moved to it being Will Ospreay. But could it be both? It could be both. It could I'd be a like number of people. That. I think the key is that it says all the fans know and respect this person. Do they all respect that dastardly Will Ospreay? Well, we know David Finley doesn't. We remember that quote, no. right? That was... <laughs> So. He's only smarter than Flip Gordon. It's <laughs> CMLL. <laughs> CMLL's own Flip Gordon. He's gonna, Flip hey, Gordon. he'll be in the main event tonight, but hey, the pre-show match, MJF and his mystery partner against the guns, who you got? Roddy. Think it's gonna be Roddy and they hold on to the titles? Or do it's gotta be him. Gun take him? It's gotta be him or Samoa Joe. For storyline sense. I think whoever it is, I'm hoping the guns win the belts just to take them off MJF and we can be rid of that kind of scenario there. Hook against Wheeler Yuta is expected to be added for the FTW title. Could you see a title change there? Yeah, why not? Do it. Give Hook another feud to go with, and I think it's good for both of them.
tag title four-way. Big Bill, Ricky Starks against FTR, against the Kings of the Black Throne, and LFI, Delistico, and Roosh. What do you do? I think the belts stay on Ricky Starks and Big Bill. But I hope we get an FTR LFI feud out of this. Let's see what happens with Harwood and Roosh tonight. I'm looking forward to that. AEW TBS title three way. Chris Statlander, Sky Blue, Julia Hart. I'm going with Sky Blue in the big upset. Hmm. I'm going to go Julia Hart in the upset there, to be honest with you. Young Bucks, Golden Jets. Ah, that's that's a tough one. I think the Golden Jets win. Texas Death Match, Adam Page, Swerve Strickland. Hangman. Adam Page. Hangman. Adam Page, right? Yeah, exactly. Hey, music's up here. Got a couple more matches to go through. We will get to those on the other side. So remember, you better be scribbling these down so you can put them on... uh, Whatever the the betting site there is. Uh, Which one do they use? Uh, Bodog. Bodog. Calvin Air, what a man. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi, Filthy Tom Lawler here to put a bow on things. But first, we got to finish up with our predictions for AEW Full Gear Saturday night on pay per view from the Kia Forum in Los Angeles, California. Filthy AEW Women's World Title Match, Hikaru Shida against Tony Storm with Luther with the Lufa. I think they're pulling the trigger. I How think... can you not? Unfortunately, Hikaru Shida just seems to be stuck in this role as like a transitional champion. Like we need someone credible to get the belt on. She's going to end up with 300 title def- wins <laughs> and like zero defenses she looks she's gonna be always somebody you can rely on every single time for that company but she'll probably never get the due that others will tony storm i think does win this belt we gotta have something with her and mariah may that probably leads to the finish and ends up screwing sheeta out of the belt Six-man tag team match. Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, Nick Wayne against Copeland, Allen, and Sting. Flair kind of disappeared from the advertising, but who do you got? The heels. Nah, Uh, you know, I don't know. You don't have to switch a title, so maybe the baby faces send them home happy. I don't know. I'm actually thinking the heels win that one. We'll see. I think uh, it may even be Nick Wayne getting a ceremonial pin over somebody. Yeah. AEW International title, Orange Cassidy, John Moxley. I think Orange Cassidy gets the win. I think the story has been set up for him to overcome the odds. Although, now that I say that, I'm starting to think maybe it needs a little bit more time to flesh out. I'd love to see Moxley win the title, take it uh, to 1 4, and then have that mingled in with the uh, New Japan belts. So, just so we can get rid of some of those and get them out of the way. But the AEW world title, MJF and Jay White. I mean, MJF, right? I think so. I think MJF is keeping that title, at least until there's. Adam! <laughs> Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands, 
of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio, all for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.